I, I, I love came and shown uh, number 15. Uh, they've got some nice, nice weapons to throw to. So, you know, Gibbs, again, I think it's a lot of it's about confidence early, Mark. Can Gibbs get confident? Well, a week ago, the opening kickoff was returned for six by Campbell County. That will not happen tonight as the kick flies out of bounds. And there goes Ella. First time tonight, slides past the tee, wearing a GoPro. And we may show you some of that footage here in a little bit. Let's see if our technology will allow us to do that. Bryson Palmer, the quarterback, he is a senior, very balanced, and has some big receivers like that guy, Bryson Walker. Yeah, Walker, six foot three, uh, shown six foot two. Eli Hubs will work at the tailback. They're down about three tailbacks, so going from the up back, full back to the tailback for the ends. We'll go to Hubs. And as his dad said today, I'll tell you after the stinger. The Rivalry Thursday starting lineups brought to you by Old Ben Franklin Motors. Starting lineups, this offensive line will really need to control the line of scrimmage, which uh, we'll show you the starting lineup in a minute. What I was going to say is, is that uh, Eli's dad, Brent, telling me today on the way over here, don't expect my son to try to fake anybody out. He's going to run right over whoever it is and just keep heading straight down the field. And they'll keep the football. Quarterback Palmer himself will get the first down and a little bit more. Pass midfield, pass the 40, pass the 30. He's Cut gone. back He's inside. Got... Inside Woo! the 10, first down and goal. Eagles at the six-yard line. Just what the doctor ordered for one Bryson Palmer. That's a great, great call. Uh -oh. He gets up a little bit limping, but fake the action out to the left and then just have him basically run a jet motion on himself. Palmer will look to throw, gets some pressure, rolls out of it, back of the end zone. Oh, nice defensive Almost play. The catch. That's a great defensive play by Tate Russell. Could have easily been a catch for Gibbs. And as I mentioned a moment ago, this line of scrimmage will need to control the line and open holes like they just did on the 58-yard pickup by the quarterback. Yeah, the worst thing going for Gibbs right now is he, he, Bryson Palmer is clearly hobbling. He, he's not immobile, but he's clearly affected somewhat. Second down and goal at the six. Palmer looks to throw. Throws this one into very deep coverage. And the defense, especially the secondary, very solid for the Mavericks. They are really good. Uh, they love Braden Miller at corner. Um, he's so good, he plays twice. Um, nice. It plays everywhere. Third down and goal at the six. They'll run the option, and uh, that's not what the doctor ordered. Eric Kane on the sideline, fourth down, looking to kick a field goal. I was going to say, Bryson Palmer obviously came up a little gingerly after that long run, but on the play right after, he got popped when he let go of the football. So, as Austin pointed out, he is really hurting here to end this drive. Well, an awkward angle. Well, especially right for a, a, a left-footed kicker. 26-yard field goal from the right hash. Kick is up, and it is good. So just 125 into the game. And it gives Eagles strike first. Huge run by Palmer sets up the field goal. Again, you go back. The nice play by Tate Russell, the senior, knocking it away from Cayman Schoen. The difference between three and seven. Well, and I think that's the kind of thing where the quarterback is able to get over to the sideline, just kind of walk it off. Everybody's asking him, how are you doing? He'll walk it off, and he says, I'm fine. Gives four and two on the year. One of their losses, the offense scored 55 points. <laughs> I mean, 
Fulton beat him in a shootout. It was yeah. a 61-55, whatever it was. It was a lot. Well, good news, bad news. And good news is he scored 55. Bad news is Fulton just scored again. You know, I mean, it's kind of one of those deals. Gibbs drives six plays, 54 yards in 125. A 58-yard run by Bryson Palmer, longer than the drive itself. A week ago when Austin wasn't here, you know, Joe McNish, he writes the drive down and then he tapes it up to the wall. He literally had so many cards up there on the wall, he was losing space for so many scores a week ago. Brad Turner is a guy that I think really likes the underdog mentality this week. Well, yeah, he, he told me out on the field. He goes, I loved, when I, was a point, when I was playing, and even as a coach, I loved games where your team is the underdog, where your team is, has nothing to lose. And it, it's Gibbs in a lot of ways right here. I mean, Anderson County's supposed to win. They're supposed to win big. Can Gibbs hang around, make this a four-quarter fight, and see what happens? Short kickoff, returnable from the 11 we'll call it and that is Gibbs football the tackle at the 22 yard line this is an actual Gibbs road game unlike the game earlier in the year we had them where they they were they're the home team Walker Martinez out for his first series last week 15 to 22 317 four touchdowns and limited work as they led 49 to nothing at Carter yeah Gavin no uh is back out there he's and he been, only makes martinez better yeah he's been hobbling a little bit with a hamstring issue gibbs showing pressure right up the middle they'll give it to no off right tackle and he'll be tackled behind the line of scrimmage for a loss of one set up the offense for you for anderson county all starts with the quarterback but he does have some I mean, there's always a mood here too you know <laughs> Well, that's what happens when you have a, a, a good older brother and then a younger brother and a younger brother after that and a younger brother after that and a cousin and, you know. Well, there's just those schools. I mean, you drive through the Smoky Mountains and everything's named Ogle. Ogle, Parton, McCarter. Yeah. Call it uh, nothing on first down. Martinez with all kinds of time across the middle. Big hit there. Coming through Wyatt West for Gibbs. Gain of seven yards. And Wyatt West at the linebacker position, as Austin just mentioned. Obviously, this, this back seven, if you will, will be tested tonight. Yeah, big third down here for Gibbs defense. Going to get off the Picks field. this one out and, and they shot do. down. They do, unless Anderson Kane decides to go for it inside their own 30. And it doesn't look like that'll be the case. Yeah, I... It's too early. So to update everyone on the Gibbs football stadium, as I remember they don't have one, uh, construction company uh, messed up and uh, they had to dig out all the footers they poured. They've had to start over, <laughs> including the ticket booth, which was built back in June, was never used, but was built in the wrong spot. So it's been torn down. And we'll go to break with that so you can uh, Harp on that for the next couple of minutes. Eagles ball at their own 31, up three.
Did I say it's a gorgeous night? What a shot of the moon. It's got a powerful lens right there. Three nothing gives with the lead. And a flag thrown on the Eagles during the timeout will move the ball all the way back to the 16 yard line. Don't know exactly what the flag was for. So now first and 25, we need a clarification on that. That's very strange. I'm sure Eric Kane's on the way over there right now to clear it up for us. So first down and 25 at the 16 yard line, that is gonna leave a mark. Hubs right up the middle for a quick five yards, maybe four. And second down and 21. Had a bit of a large 15 yards. Yeah, you think? I mean, it had to be barely bad to back it up like that. Second down at 21. Palmer looks to throw. Catch is made out past the 30. And that'll at least give it. You know, give him a chance on third down. Be about third and seven. Yeah, third down and manageable is Bryson Walker for 14 yards. Walker, a big, lanky receiver at 6'3", 175. And uh, if Brad Turner and this team can overcome that penalty, throw into the near side. Oh, he almost, oh, he almost made the catch. That's shown. Almost had it. Almost made the grab. High points it. He looks like he's got it there and then just can't bring it in. It. Even though you punt this away, you have to feel good about where you're at. Your defense got to stop on their initial uh, first drive. And then, you know, you've shown that, you know, you can you can complete some ballot balls to the air. Low snap. Anderson County back got home, but a great punt here, Mark. Bouncing punt back to the 22-yard line. A fair catch is made, actually, the 23. Well, our cheer dance spotlight is brought to you by Exterior Home Solutions. And for that, we go to the home team, Anderson County. And the cheerleaders are the seniors. Willow Martinez, the twin of Anderson County's quarterback, Walker Martinez and Haley Wilson. So the Mavericks get the football. Gavin No coming up the right side and will get it out to the 34 yard line. And a first down. So the uh, clarification that we're given on that 15 yard penalty is what Eric Kane says. The penalty was on the Gibbs sideline. Officials thought the coach said something to them. The coach said he was talking to his own coach. The drama is how Eric Kane turned it. That's one of your writers for Volquest. The drama. The drama. <laughs> Eric, who regularly watches Bold and the Beautiful and the Young and the Restless, knows about that daytime problem. Really? Incomplete pass, make it a second down. Brad Turner thought that was funny. Man, about if you grew up in the South and you didn't grow, go, grow up watching a little bit of the Young and the Restless with your grandma standing there as a young kid, I don't know what to tell you. If you don't know who Victor Newman is, I don't know what to tell you. I think I know who Victor Newman is. Is he like the big dark-headed guy? Dark-headed guy with the mustache. Eric Braden's his name. Well, I had a 50-50 shot. He was, in, the, he he was, was in Titanic. Big, big good-looking dark-headed guy. He was, a, he, was a, so. he was an extra in Titanic. Third down and seven. The Anderson County offense. So you just didn't get this kind of back and forth last week. We, we, didn't, we didn't need this banter a week ago. Third and seven at the 37. Martinez oh, takes got a him. shot downfield. Beautiful, beautiful. Past the safety. And a nice completion to Eli Braden for a big pickup of 28 yards. The corner, I think, just got lost in space. Well, yeah, he bit on the pump fake. He came up, and that left the safety out there on 
on an island and then just a nice throw to find his man, Braden. First down, Martinez across the middle, catches me for a first down. This is when the uh, Maverick offense gets rolling. Yeah, they get that, they get that up tempo. And you can get backpedaling, get them playing on their heels a little bit. First down and 10 at the 22. No off right tackle. Puts a foot in the ground and close to first down yardage again. Guys running the chains are having a hard time keeping up after a gain of nine, going up tempo. Martinez, no. And he will carry defenders. First down and goal inside the 10 at about the six yard line. No will come out. First and goal at the six for Martinez and the offense. Handoff inside the move, off right tackle, touchdown. And the fireworks go high in the air at Anderson County as the Mavericks take their first lead of the night. Good blocking up front, Boog. Hits that hole, sealed by 52 for Anderson County, that being Eli Nelson, the junior offensive lineman, doing a nice job off his right tackle spot. Moog rolls in. Extra point, always important, as we definitely figured out last week. 7-3, Anderson County is the score. Let's take a break and a break after the Nick Moog touchdown for a message from Dynabody. Pete Hall is here with Dynabody. Pete, Mark. not that you're Santa Claus, but Christmas is right around the corner. It's going to be closer than you think, or it is closer than you think, so it's not too soon to start coming to Dynabody and looking for some of those early Christmas gifts. Okay, so the showroom is alive and well. Why you smile that I say that, I don't know, but you've got a lot of equipment. Yes, we do. I mean, we are slam full. New equipment, used equipment. Also, we have lots of treadmills, elliptical, stationary bikes. So any, to fit any fitness need, we have it. Does Santa Claus handle financing? Uh, we'll work something out. <laughs> Santa Claus Hall, <laughs> Dynabody.com. Thanks, Mark. I thought you'd say ho, ho, ho. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. You teed him up. I did. 7-3 Anderson County on a beautiful night. Eagles went 54 yards on their first drive of the game. Ended up in a field goal. Mavericks come right back. Six plays, 77 yards and 204, and Nick Move goes in for a six-yard touchdown. So back to the stadium deal about Gibbs. We had them at Carson Newman against Central. So a number of the seniors, all of them, told the Gibbs administration, if senior night is at another Knox County Stadium, a la South Doyle, we're not going to walk across the field for senior night. So the last game of the season will be back at Carson Newman. And if things work out, Gibbs could be, could have a home playoff game. And their hope is that that game would be at Carson Newman as well. Yeah, if they don't win tonight, they'll need some help, which means likely they would need Carter to beat Fulton. They beat South Doyle, end up in a big three-way tie, and then it goes to overall record because Fulton will be Gibbs, Gibbs will be Carter, Carter will be Fulton, the big triangle. Goes to overall record, and in that scenario, if Gibbs wins enough games down the stretch, they could get past both the other teams on overall record. By the way, uh, first quarter score, um, unfortunately for Sweetwater, going in at five and one. Big men, 22, Sweetwater nothing, first quarter. First down and 10 for the Eagles, Hubs off left tackle. We'll pick up five yards. Brent was, was laughing to me about it. He goes, watch the way my son holds the football. Yeah, he, he, he won't. He, it's two hands said, all the time, man. He said he literally tries to pop the air out of the ball. Loves to block. Palmer steps up. 
and will back his way for a game first down. four yards. Yeah. They threw, Anderson County threw him ahead for first down. All right, close to it. They move in the chains. Yeah, they got it. You got to be impressed with what you see out of Palmer. He can, he can spin it. I mean, he really can throw. He threw it well, but Central. Uh, Carson Newman that night for the Central game. He's thrown some really nice balls tonight. Uh, one of them was dropped. Another one was a nice defensive play by Tate Russell. Another one was caught. Play fake and run, and he will, and he'll back up to the 34. Gain of four yards. That's Gibbs a, comes in uh, four and two on the season for Brad Turner. Played baseball at Carson Newman. You know, there are coaches that, if you, I've we talked about this over the years, they just kind of fit the community that they're in. Turner's kind of one of those that gives. He, 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 he does, and I think he's really come into, come into his own as the head coach. Palmer looks to throw, catch is made, close to first down yardage. I think they'll mark it about a yard short as Connor Adkins Sr. makes the grab, and it will be third down on about half a yard. It's tackled by Tate Russell. Gibbs doing everything they can to draw the Mavericks off sides. They'll go right up the middle for Hugs, who will barrel his way over the 40 for a first down. Eli um, given an invitation to the Commercial Bank Rivalry Showcase uh, as a linebacker and wanted to play, but as Palmer looks to throw, look at this move. Boy, how about that running for Palmer? A big, quick gain of about three yards. Anyway, Eli Hubs wanted to play, but he's a great wrestler. Yeah, finished, finished second finished in the state. Second in the state, runner-up in the state championship match. In the 195 yeah. class to a young man out of Trousdale County. So Eli had to decline the invitation. As Palmer will look to throw. Throws it out of bounds. Flag comes in for pass interference. By the way, Eli Hubs beat in overtime to get to the state championship match. Pass interference, defense number four, 15 yard penalty, results in the first down. Who Eli Hubs had to beat was Aiden Littles of Pigeon Forge, who's a great running back safety for Scott Meadows at Pigeon Forge. So you talk about a great wrestler, and he will be in the court for me. And he is playing, yes, he will be in as a safety. Aiden will be. First down off that penalty. Palmer looks to throw, throws this one. Oh, how about that catch? Oh, oh and he can't again. come down with it again. Boy, high into the air. He came and shown. Coming in to knock it away, Dalen Cole. High points it. He's got it and doesn't have it. Let's go, Jack. Well, Here we go, Dalen Cole just does just enough to kind of throw Schoen off. They kind of got up underneath him. And Cone, Schoen lost some concentration there. Second down and 10. They'll go to Hub. And how about that shot? <laughs> Eli Davis. That's textbook for form tackle. Ninth play of the drive, a third down and 12 coming up. Now I'm, I'm approaching this as two down two. You're close. Better pick up some yards here if you're going to go for it. Palmer looking to throw. Turns the wrong way and definitely a punting situation there as Gavin No with the sack.
Had Palmer run to the far side of yeah, the field. Yeah, I think he picks up at least seven or eight yards. Yeah, and yeah. Lives to find another down. So as it turns out, it's fourth down and I-75. And the Eagles will punt this one away. Low end over end punt taken at the 17 yard line and slipping down is Dalen Cole. Well, we invite you to continue to support uh, Reeves Across America. We have veterans here again tonight. I think we've come up with over about $10,000 to this point to put wreaths on the gravestones of veterans, graves all over Knoxville. And uh, you are making a difference. Go to knoxwreaths.org and make a donation right now to the cause that is Wreaths Across America. Walker Martinez fakes the pass, hands off to Gavin No, and there's Hubs. Well, on the LMU Halftime Report, I'm at Lock Kick for Tires. Both of our bands. By the way, if you are a band director or a band member anywhere, we've got some pertinent information for you coming up at halftime. Our Friday night, Friday night preview, FCA that and more at halftime on the LMU Halftime Report. Second down and five, Martinez, a first down. Zeke West, a senior, makes the grab. Gibbs came in wanting to shoot Anderson County in front of him. They can drive the field, not let a big play in. Jump start there. Jump off sides. Landon Brooks. Three five yards and a first down and five at the 39. Under a minute to go, first quarter, 7 3 Anderson County. Martinez, a little slip, slip screen across the middle. And what could have been a loss of three yards ends up being a gain of one. Miller on the grab. Third down and two. Or possibly the last play of this first quarter. Or second down and two. Hand off up the right side, cutting back inside. And short of the first down at the end of the first quarter. So after one, a low scoring affair so far anyway, as the Mavericks have a 7-3 lead on Gibbs on FCA's Rivalry Thursday presented by Pilot Company. Rivalry Thursday is brought to you by Pilot Company, Ted Russell Ford, Food City, and Lincoln Memorial University. Football is back. And OMB Law is excited for a season full of big hits and those nail biting near misses. If you've been injured, OEB Law will come to your defense. Call OEB Law and turn your rep into a check. 125 years ago, LMU was born out of the desire to provide opportunity to the underserved, a living memorial to a great president who believed knowledge was a transformative force. Over the decades, we've prepared students for careers in medicine, education, nursing, business, and law, so they can go serve their communities. While a lot has changed over the past 125 years, our mission has not. Values, education, service. This is Lincoln Memorial University. Hi, I'm Laura Ash. I'm a State Farm agent in Farragut. I've been an agent here for 14 years and I'd love to earn your business. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. We're there for you if you're buying a home, a car, or you have a teenager that's starting to drive. We can help with all of that. We'd love to earn your business. When it comes to the game of football, teamwork is critical for success. When it comes to customer service and business, that team approach is just as critical. That's why we're such believers in our friends at Exterior Home Solutions. We have seen firsthand how Exterior Home Solutions has supported our community and treats their customers just like family. So when it comes to roofing, siding, or maybe a complete overhaul, please make Exterior Home Solutions your first and only call. 
Community banking is about location and much more. It's about family. We reside in your community. We are a part of your community. At Commercial Bank, our commitment extends beyond the walls of our branches. It's displayed each day in the opportunities we provide, the money we give back, and the time we commit, all to help improve the lives of the people, families, and businesses that make our communities great. Commercial Bank, life made better. Football is back, and OMB Law is excited for a season full of big hits and those nail-biting ear misses. If you've been injured, OEB Law will come to your defense. Call OEB Law and turn your wreck into a check. Rivalry Thursday is brought to you in part by Knoxville Orthopedic Clinics, proud orthopedic provider for the Rivalry Showcase. Second quarter is brought to you by the ministry that is Fellowship of Christian Athletes, making the difference in the lives of athletes all over East Tennessee. And time now for the State Farm T-shirt toss. Brought to you by Jessica Green, Jeanette Rogers, Laura Ash, and Scotty Dykes, who the head coach of Cotton County almost got a win over Central a week ago. If and buts were candy and nuts, Packer. Well, he's brought that program a long way. Yeah, they I'll played really you. hard this year. I'll tell you, and they're still young. They play a Morristown East team tomorrow night that's licking their wounds. We'll pick that one later on High School Heroes, the fifth quarter. Take a look at the first quarter stats brought to you by OEB Law. And we talked about the time of possession. Would it be key? Man, seven to three. I don't know that it's made a difference thus far. And off off right tackle on third down and one will get the first down for the Mavericks. You know what that's called, Packer? Megan the Chains. Did you just make that up? Well, no, I just used to do that when it was Ryan Moog, and now I'll do it with it's Nick Moog. And off right up the middle. Uh, turn around here. By the way, the, the guy that is Mr. <laughs> Anderson County uh, is Tim Elrod, who is here. And by the way, I noticed uh, he's in the press box, and we'll show him here in a second after the play. Okay, there we go. Uh, I noticed a play down there as you're on the Jumbotron, too, um, that – the touchdown was scored. You were the first person to welcome the player to the sideline. Absolutely, you know, because uh, <laughs> that's what we do here. That's what you do. Hey, how special are these Friday nights or tonight, Thursday night here for this community? Any any high school game is important to the community, and tonight it's 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 always for me. It's always about Anderson County when they play, but tonight it was more about Gibbs. So everybody knows what's going on. At Gibbs, their stadium, their stadium and yep. stuff, and so we wanted to ex extend our hospitality out of Anderson County here, and uh, show them a you know some respect and some love, and we were happy to participate in that before the game. Oh, Try to be respectful of the officials. I like how you did that. We stopped and paused there. So, yeah. you, you so it's against us. We shouldn't have stopped. So, <laughs> uh, so <going>. essentially, <laughs> Austin Central <laughs> laughing, by the way. So, by the way, we played the game Gibbs and Central at uh, Carson Newman earlier in the year. I know you were talking with some of the Gibbs officials about the fact that the season finale will be there as well. That's right, and that's uh, what's the most important thing for the kids, you know, yep. is, is, is how can we elevate and put them on a pedestal when they've had nothing but negative go on, and, and now getting to play at Carson Newman and those type of things, that's special. Okay, sounds good. Wait, it's a timeout down on the field. What do you want to tell us? Because this is, this works out perfectly, oh, by the way, on. for one of these deals. Filibuster. Oh, that. <laughs> uh, and, up, and if up. you're wondering, I'm looking at Price. He's, he's, he's down here. Uh, about OEB Law and what you guys have got going on business-wise. We never talk about that. Right, we don't. Uh, but when I do, I like to tell people, look, we help a lot of people in the community. We love to do it. We're very fortunate and blessed to do it. And I can think of no way to, better way to give back to the community than to, you know, participate in high school sports and participate in a lot of Thursday and all of our great people. And by the way, there you hey. are. Who have you got with you? Hey, that's uh, the Anderson County mob there. You know, you got some future <laughs> players there. One of them's got a broke wing, I think. But uh, he'll be all right. Uh, but they're all having a good time, and uh, you know that's, you know that kind of is why we love giving the check and, uh, and, and making those memories with those kids. So it's uh, always great. That's uh, Davy Gillum's son who is there with the sling. Yeah, well, he's playing. 
Davey, Davey says if he doesn't win a couple state titles with his son as quarterback, it's time to quit. Hey, man, appreciate you as always. always you're going to you're gonna help us with all the fireworks at the Rivalry Showcase again. Rivalry Thursday, or uh, Rivalry Showcase. Showcase. Awesomeness playoff uh, are coming. Can't yep. wait for all of it. It'll be good. All right, Tim Elrod, we appreciate right. it. Uh, you can learn more at uh, wreckintoacheck.com. Walker Martinez rolling out. And on the sideline, they will say catch is made at the 36-yard line on a third down and seven. How about that grab by Bryson Bowell? Beautiful sunset off in the distance, by the way, here in East Tennessee. Gain of 11 yards and a first down at the 36. Ryan moved off left tackle, or excuse me, Gavin No off left tackle. Gain of six. Probably going to have a Nick Moore incident. You know, the, the whole Nick Moore into the clear thing. Uh, it will like live forever. <laughs> For me, it will live forever. That was, when, when was that? When we do get Beard and Ferry at the end of the year, I should call Eddie and see if we can get Nick Moore to the game. <laughs> Would be awesome. Second down and three. Martinez, play fake, takes a shot, receiver behind the secondary, makes the grab, touchdown. And the fireworks go off, Bryson Vowell with the touchdown. And the Mavericks extend this to a 13-3 lead with the extra point to come. This is just uh, dropped in a bucket right here. Watch this thing just kind of rainbow right in the bread basket. Beautiful pitching catch. Bryson Val. Extra point to make it 14 3. Chris Nelson pulls this one to the left, and it. it is no good. But the touchdown up and good. 10 18 to go, second quarter. Mavericks extend the lead to 10. Thirteen to three, Anderson County. How pretty is that sunset? By the way, we mentioned the Commercial Bank Rivalry Showcase presented by Food City this year, and it will be right here Saturday night, December the tenth, on CWWBXX. As the invitations went out this week, and a lot of great players going to be playing in that game. We're about to do the Gambuza's Game Night Makeover. Here in a few 
Dustin Milan said uh, he needs a touch up. Kickoff into the end zone, a nine play 81 yard drive in 318. It was Bryson Val as Ella slides past, gets the tee, and sprints back to the sideline. Top half of the game, Booz's game night makeover. Eric from Franks is here along with Madison. And we've got, who's the kid we got down here? Is this he wearing is Carter. Clothes? This is Carter. He's, he's not wearing enough for me. I'm cold looking at him, I'll tell you that much. So what are we doing? <laughs> We're going to help him out. He's a, uh, he's a junior, Anderson County. Madison's also an Anderson County, Anderson County grad, by the way. Okay. Um, he plays basketball, uh, and we're going to help make him a little more aerodynamic. we got a doozy for you, man. This one's going to be a big one. So we're so, going to clean him up really good. So this is not just a clean up. I mean, you're doing an overhaul. This is, a, yeah, this is going to be some heavy work. We're going to have to bring in the machinery on this one. Hey, Eric, listen, if Frank's not going to be here, you've got to talk with a New Jersey <laughs> with, with a New Jersey accent to make up oh, for it. Oh, man, so I have to say, like, pizza and stuff like that, put an R on some things. <laughs> yeah. Hey, so, Carter, are you? Is that are like you? my mother-in-law who says Belks and Walmarts and puts S's <laughs> okay. on the end of things? So, Carter, <laughs> are you okay with it, about what to happen? I reckon so. <laughs> he reckons so. He'll be okay with it once he sees it at the end. Classic. Okay, do your thing. Right on. We'll do it. Palmer rolling left. They'll get the yards they lost back on first down and maybe one more. And a third down. Bryson Allen on the catch. Don't need to mention a big third down here for Gibbs, down 13 to three against the number two team in the state. They could be a co-number one with Greenville. Looking to throw, will run, love the call here. They've had success with Palmer running the football and he'll get the first down and boy, they needed that. Yeah, it just kind of slows the pace, gets a little bit of momentum. 14 yards on the delayed quarterback draw and a first down at the 35 yard line. And they'll do it again, this time going nowhere. Flag comes in. This is gonna be against Anderson County. Face mask, defense, five yard penalty, first down. Incidental variety, but five yards. First down and five at the 40 yard line. And expect to see a dose of one Eli Hubs. They'll hand off off left tackle, and oh. football comes loose. He got popped up high. That ball popped right out. Now, even though he's carrying the football with two hands, watch how he is protecting the football as much as he can, and they still put a hat on the ball. And the Eagles there to pick it up. Yep, lucky to get that one back. Second and five. No gain on the play is Carter Jr. I don't know what that colored thing is on his head. Roll one way, throw back the other, oh. and look out here. Look out here. Down the sideline, looking for the end zone and finding it. Touchdown, Eagles. Came and shown for 60 yards. There's a flag. There's a flag. Flag back at the 44. A whole lot of talking going on about what this is. Apparently, the touchdown will stand. There is no flag in the play. The result of play is a touchdown. So the touchdown will stand 13 to 9. Right. Roll right, throw back left, and it popped wide open. I think he was going to throw holding on the wide receiver, but by the time the wide receiver had. Actually held. 
Schoen was 15 yards past that. I think they picked it up. I, it's the only thing I could see. So kind of a stoppage here as the Eagles trying to cut it to a three-point deficit. Good snap, good hold, kick is up, and it is good. And as you say, every once in a while, they're hanging around the chicken coop down 13 to 10. Five plays, 80 yards in 209. A break for a message from Ted Russell Ford. Blue 2020, F-150, 41.990. Hut, Jake drops back. He's got a deal wide open. The crowd goes wild with savings. Whether you're looking for a low mileage pre-owned truck to tailgate in or a minivan to get the whole family to the game, the pre-owned patrol has what you're looking for. Only at Ted Russell Ford on Kingston Pike or Parkside Drive. 13 to 10 is the score now. Mavericks with the lead, 8.09 to go in the first half. Well, if you have a student getting ready for the ACT, it is so important that they get in touch with the Coons Cram course. Schools raising those merit scholarships, lottery dollars are going back up. Schools requiring it again. Trust your student's ACT score to my friends and their training at CoonsCramCourse.com. Art Packer along with Austin Price, 13 to 10. And, and as I said, if Gibbs hanging around the chicken coop is the underdog. Well, they are. Again, they've made some plays offensively. A couple of nice defensive plays by Anderson County have, have kept Gibbs out of the end zone on, on one or two drives. A drop yep. has kept Gibbs from moving the ball on another drive, but they've shown some promise. So they're hanging around. They got to finish out this half right here as they're going to do something like this. A little pooch kick that, oh, the football comes loose and will bounce back to the 33 yard line. And that almost worked for Gibbs. Eric Kane, what do you got? Yeah, so they were going to look at, see if they were linemen downfield on, on that uh, when the flag was on the field. But since the pass was obviously behind the line of scrimmage, you could be in front and blocking. You see receivers do that on screens all the time. That's why they picked the uh, the flag up. Okay. You liking it back there on the sideline, or do you prefer to be up here? I prefer to be up there. <laughs> but, I, but, I, but I'm happy. I'm happy tonight down here, too. First down. Ah, this one busts wide open for Gavin No, and he will get the first down past midfield, out of bounds at the 48-yard line, and a flag for a little extra curriculars. And then that's the kind of stuff Gibbs just can't have. An extra 15 after a big Anderson County play, after you've got a little bit of momentum. After the play. Personal foul, number 20 defense, 15-yard penalty, first down. Just, a snark, just not a smart play by Wyatt West. Right there. Well, Wyatt West has got his arms up like I was I was just trying to get him out of bounds. Yeah, but it's you're in the green past the white, and you're still spinning it. Yeah, kind of hanging now on. I understand all the you may there. not know where you are, but yeah. you knew you were close to the out of bounds. 33-yard line, flag comes Free in. Play. Martinez rolls left. And they'll say incomplete. Flags on both sides of the field. And be a legal shift, what would he call? Illegal formation, offense, five-yard penalty. Remains first down. These are the moments where Gibbs has to be able to take advantage of having Anderson County behind the sticks. You go back to that last drive, Mark, when Tim was on here, they had that third and three, they had the false start, made a third and eight, and then they gained 11 and got the first down. Kept the chain going, scored score touchdown. First and 15, Martinez heads off to move right up the middle into the second level and a first down. It was first and 15, he got 16 and will move the chains. Moving the chains. Did you steal that from somebody? Myself. You might 
not offer it back. Nah. Gain of four, and it's second down and six. No off left tackle. Will hurdle the defender, taken down from behind, and asking for the penalty. Definitely not a horse collar. I don't know what he's asking for. They will move the chains first down, and they'll pause to move the chains. I see Jimmy Matlock down there. We've got the A team here for the Matlock kick for tires, by the way. First and 10 at the 12, right up the middle. Move running through defenders, touchdown. 12 yards on the touchdown, and the Mavericks take a 19 to 10 lead with the extra point to come. Huge hole by the AC offensive line. And then move, you can pick this combination of Moog and No. And those are two guys that are just incredibly tough to bring down on first contact. And Gibbs finds themselves in a situation where they just have to keep answering. Mr. Point is up and good this time. 20 to 10. Well, your opportunity to Hear the inspirational story of former Georgia head coach Mark Richt coming up on the FCA Night of Influence on October the 24th here in just a few weeks. At the Knoxville Expo Center, you have opportunities to sponsor the event. Multiple levels there on the right of your screen. Presenting sponsor, Graham Corporation. Eric Kane for a Humana Sideline Report. And down here on the Anderson County sideline, kind of before that drive started, uh, some frustration from the coaching staff to the players saying they're not doing the little things correctly, they're beating themselves. And so you saw a lot of 25, a lot of 18, a lot of no, a lot of move on that drive, just doing what they do best, getting into the end zone and getting some breathing room here from a Gibbs team that we knew would be pesky. Have you heard anyone down there say that it's time for us to moog down the field? I have not, but I like that. I thought it was kind of catchy. I also like oh. when you said maybe you should give it back. I, I had a little LOL moment down here by myself. <laughs> Did you actually say LOL out loud and not in a text form? On TV, too. Good grief. <laughs> 6.34 to go first half. Mavericks now up 20 to 10. And for the Eagles, it's kind of like that uh, that golfer that already used up his mulligan. Better hit the fairway at this point. There are no mulligans from here on out. There goes Ella. Come on, this is like the best part of the broadcast is, is Ella. Where's the treat? Where's my treat? Somebody give me a treat. If I'm gonna run all the way out there, give me something. Look at that. That's good stuff. Palmer rolls right. Overthrows the receiver. Connor Atkins was there. Can you imagine how we're gonna be rocking this place? with the rivalry showcase when your girls from west are out there with the speakers the laser shows going the fireworks are going off it's gonna be uh, loud are we gonna have richie no here doing uh is richie no richie, gonna be gonna here to the pa for the robbery showcase yeah you'll be here for the robbery showcase because tim elrod will make you come Run out to the 24-yard line. We'll bring up a third down and six. I love how 
they put the principal bend downs up on the jumbotron. <laughs> <laughs> I just noticed that. Third down and about six. Palmer going to use the legs here. Oh, look at the move there. Nice turn, play. Throw this one oh, out. Did he make the catch? They'll say no. And you're officially in danger zone. You really are, yeah. Spot if you're Gibbs. We'll punt this away, give them relatively a short field. This thing could be 27 to 10. Quicker than a hiccup. Got to be impressed with Palmer. Timeout taken here by Gibbs. Well, the time now for the E2 Sports Scholar Athlete of the game. And don't mistake that guy for Brent Hubbs. That is Eli Hubbs, the senior running back, linebacker, a 4.2 GPA. Head off uh, to the military after high school. And as we said earlier, a great wrestler. Well, he's going to go to UT, but he's joined the, uh, the Reserve National Guard. He's got his pilot's license. Soon I'll have him flying me to the top 100 golf courses all over the place. Well, Jimmy Matlock here for the Matlock Kick for Tires. Our bands tonight, once again, band directors. Anybody that's in a high school band, pay attention. I have some very important information for you uh, coming up while the Gibbs Band is playing. Dare they call a timeout to come up with some trickeration to try uh, to pick up the first down? I mean, you wouldn't call a timeout. I would be in punt safe if that was the case. Third punt of the night. Beautiful punt. He's, he's boom some. And they'll let this one go and take him down at the 30-yard line. Flip the field. 45-yard punt. Gibbs has not had a stop since the first set of Anderson County downs, where AC went three and out. Punts tonight, 43, 45, and 45. You know, we could have sold one of those kiss cams tonight since we're on the Jumbotron here, too. Yep, that's what we needed to do, Packer, for a high school broadcast. <laughs> Prior to snap, encroachment, defense, number 56. Five-yard penalty remains first down. Yeah, that nice punt, and then you have to give Anderson County a easy five. Those are kind of things you just can't do when you're the underdog. Nope, that's right. First down and five. With that said, they'll throw this one for a quick first down. This would have been a game tonight where uh, my kids would have been able to come. Normally they show up to the Anderson County ones. But they had their final match of fall golf league with Miss Tammy Lauren out of Beverly Park. So they've enjoyed doing that. They go to Grand Oaks Elementary here in Anderson County. They play a little bit of golf. They have their daddy swing. I just hope they have their daddy short game. Well, Avery's got her daddy's putting stroke. And Addison hits the ball. So. Tough running for Gavin No. That's the Gavin No that we've grown to love over the last 27 years that he's been playing here. Number 25, Gavin No. By the way, the OEB Law Game of the Week tomorrow night on BBB12DTV.com is Lenore City and Clinton on the OEB Law Game of the Week. And Tim Elrod is happy to give Clinton High School $1,000 tomorrow night. It's a sneaky game. Lenore City's pesky. They got three losses, three losses by a combined less than 10 points. Martinez Clinton has to come ready to play. What's, where's this thrown? It's thrown right in the hands of the Gibbs defender, and, and we've got a return back to midfield by number six, Bryson Walker. Well, and Martinez runs to his receiver, and just some miscommunication as the interception made by Walker. But Martinez got together with Brayden Miller. And not to call out his receiver, but just a hey, we, we've got to be on the same page. Miller's nowhere in the same area code. Well, but credit Walker for knowing where the ball was when it was thrown and going and getting it. 
big was that for Gibbs? Well, especially if they go down here and put points on the board. Look to throw, will step up. And once again, he, he steps up, makes the defenders come towards him. He's just got to make that pass. Well, no touch. He, 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 every time it's either been, you know, an AC player's got a hand on it like the last driver. That time, he rockets it. And it's low and not much the receiver can do there. Second down and 10 at the 50. He'll play fake and look to throw again and overthrows his receiver again, continuing to go to Walker. And at this point, the Eagles not you, handling prosperity very well. No, you, <laughs> the Anderson County, if the Gibbs decided to go for this and didn't get it, they'd have better football position than they had before the interception. Four receivers top of your screen and a bunch set for Palmer. Palmer throws back to the near side, gets a block, gets a stiff arm. See ya. 50 yards for the touchdown for Kamen Schoen again. And just what the Eagles needed. Able to get that one block that he needed. Watch this. They, <laughs> the old way let Anderson County come right after them and then Schoen. His second touchdown of the night, 60 yards on the first one, 50 yards on this one, and the leader in the clubhouse, the Exterior Home Solutions, a six-star MVP. Well, by the way, a lot of great photos from all of our games this year, and not just football, a DHIL, dot photo like a shot of the QR code there band cheerleaders all kinds of shots courtesy of uh, DH photography well so where do we go from here uh, next we week. stay in Anderson County. <laughs> Look at this. We're in Campbell County. We come down 75, exit 122, and then we just head it I due west from here, from Anderson County over to Oak Ridge. I, I didn't even think about it when we set the schedule. We started the season going off 40 towards North Carolina. Yes, we did. And then we start coming over this way, and then we'll matriculate our way back to Knox County for South Doyle in Bearden, and then OEB Law Playoff Friday. Presented by Pilot Company coming up in November. Three plays, 50 yards, 21 seconds. And shown for the touchdown, 20 to 17. A low bouncing kick will be returnable from the eight yard line up the near side and out past the 25 yard line is Eli Brady. I'll tell you who's done a really good job is DeJuan Harris on special teams for, it, for Gibbs. He's got about three tackles on special teams so far. The, uh, the freshman. That's earning your playing time as a young guy. So they'll go back to the ground to Gavin No, this has been working and he'll be taken out of bounds after a five yard game. We're talking about the middle eight right here, Mark. The last four of the first, the first four of the second. Yeah. Anderson County goes down here and they score, make it 27-17, gets the ball to start the second half, go and score and make it 34-17. That's all she wrote. This is a huge little stretch right here to end and begin this first and second half for Gibbs. Inside handoff. This has really been working for Moog. Well, this this is the the, the uh, Gibbs game plan defensively. Let, let them have stuff on the ground and keep it in front of them. Don't let them go over the top with a bunch of big plays. Right up the middle. Tough running. Clock goes under four minutes to go in the first half. They'll stay on the ground to Gavin No. 
And just short of first down yardage, gain of eight. Speaking of Anderson County, uh, as Martinez looks to throw, stops, takes a shot. Receiver is there, asking for a flag and not getting it. Should have been one. That was a, uh, a bit of a pass hook. interference. <laughs> a bit of a hook there. Uh, the other team that's in the top two in the state. Let's take a look at it right here to make get your all angles. Hands, hand on the jersey. Yeah, that's not enough. It is too. Nah. Going down the momentum. Agree to disagree. Third down and two. Martinez gives it to no. It's not going to matter here. Who got the first down into Gibbs territory? What I was going to say is, is tomorrow night also in Anderson County, uh, Oak Ridge, essentially, uh, Greenfield at Oak Ridge tomorrow. We were at the rivalry showcase meeting the other day, and it was kind of funny. Tony Lambert was there, defensive coordinator for Anderson County. And Eddie Spradlin of Greenville was at the meeting. And Tony says, what about, hey, hey, Spradlin, what about that number four you got? And Eddie says, number four? He's a junior. Are y'all already watching film on us? It was, it, it was a funny moment that it was kind of given away by the Anderson County coaches to Greenville that they're already watching film on Greenville. And Eddie Spradlin's like, we haven't even started looking at film on you guys. Tony was like, oh. Tony's in his element at those meetings with all the coaches. <laughs> Holding court, like, you know, going to your local local uh, restaurant, and hanging out with a bunch of the guys. Second down and eight. I'll tell you what, if you're Anderson County, you're almost glad that was overthrown because shown had the angle on that one, had it been thrown accurately. Again, getting off the field here would be huge for Gibbs. Third down and eight, 2.09 to go, first half. Mavericks get the football to start the second half. Gibbs showing pressure, they'll step back. Martinez has time, can run if he wants. Stops, takes a shot downfield. Receiver all by himself, touchdown. That one way too easy to Eli Braden for 45 yards. Try to only rush three and give him all day. I mean, the, the secondary can only hold up for so long. Now, that's really wide open. But again, how long did he have right there? It's like one 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000. I mean, he just sat back there all day. Seven 1,000. Extra point to make it 27 17. Now, you do have some time here. Uh, 159 to potentially go right back down the field and make this thing 27-24. Well, our thanks to Gray Hodges for $1,000 going to the visiting school every week this year. Justin Ward, Kelly Gorman representing Gray Hodges as $1,000 goes to Gibbs High School. And uh, really have enjoyed Gray Hodges being a part of what we're doing this year, supporting the visiting school. They've got the bus expenses, they've got travel expenses, and Gray Hodges really making a difference uh, with those road schools. Beautiful area coverage brought to you by Exterior Home Solutions. 27-17 with 1.59 to go in the first half. Are we going to be back here third round of the playoffs? Are you calling it? Nope. I'm not You're, calling not. You're not. You're not. I'm not not calling it. I'm just a long way to go. I mean, if Martinez is healthy, there's a really good shot at it. But again, everybody is kind of who's going to mess that up? Well, I mean, we're talking we're talking Greenville Anderson. I mean, it would be Elizabethan. 
I mean, even though they're one and five or whatever, they they're leading still, deep into this football I, I feel game you. here. I, don't, I was about to say they're one and five, but they're still Elizabeth. Then they're two and four, right? You still can't. So I'd have to look it up. You still can't sleep on Sean Witten and the Cyclones. Correct. I mean, championship programs, they, you know, have a tendency to find a way. That game would be back here. Turn up past the 20 for Levi Allison. Again, if everybody stays healthy, I would venture to say that'll be the game we see in the third half. It took that long for you to come around. Seven plays, no, 75 I, I, yards. I said that a minute oh, ago. What? I said if, if, as long as Walker Martinez is upright. Yeah. But, I mean, if he's not, that would drastically change Anderson County. Like, like it did last year. Now, there have been times where these those two teams have been – you know, mortal. Receiving team. Be a 15 yard penalty. First ten. Seven play, 75 yard drive. Great, and a 45 yard touchdown. And not that I would call Greenville having to hold off a Dobbins Bennett two point conversion. I mean, that's a that's a powerful 6 a team on the road. That's a one loss team in that one one game. That was kind of like a. Alcoa West or Maryville West type game. Well, let's put it this way. Football's football. I mean, you see it every week in college, you see it every week in high school. Elizabeth had lost to Science Hill by double digits, right? Science Hill 17, got seven, yeah. Huh? 17 7. Yeah, but it's still double digits. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, is it double digits or it not? Is, it is. It was okay. a 10 point game. Uh, exactly. Yes, well, okay. then don't say, well, maybe. I mean, okay. it's a. Jeez. Right, Anderson County goes to Science Hill. They clobbered them. Um, and then you, you're thinking, when they play, when these two teams play, Elizabeth and Anderson County, oh, this is shellac. And then there, Elizabeth was leading deep into the fourth quarter. Right. So, I mean, you never know. Comparative get, scores, it's hard to get into comparative scores. Yeah, because I mean, you, you just don't know what you're seeing week in, week out. We're not there for those games. Um, I would venture to say Anderson County would, would definitely be the favorite if they played again and would have a really good chance to win. So, in other words, you're saying – the steel line from Forrest Gump. Football's kind of like a box of chocolates. Sure. You just don't know what you're going to get. By the way, talk about danger zone spot. 126 to go. Gibbs is... Uh, I know. Well, it's what happens when you try to come out and you try to throw. I mean... Stop the clock on the incompletion. I think you have to go and try. Third and seven, you have to go try to get the first down. Here. And... and Anderson County read that perfectly. Gain of three for Palmer. And the danger zone spot is with 119 to go. You give the Mavericks the football back, and they get the ball to start the second half. Yeah, I was saying 34-17 early in the second half. All of a sudden, it could be 34-17 at the half. Sure. You punt this ball away. Kind of makes you think of those miracle games we've had over the years. It's yeah. Like, Powell hangs around or somebody hangs around the game and all of a sudden those last three or four minutes of the first half and you get to halftime and you go, what happened? Fourth punt of the night. Pretty good night so far for Walker. 43, 45, 45. And a low bouncing kick here that will take a nice rolling bounce for the Eagles. Flip the field again and uh, under the 30 yard line, 51 yards and about 41 of that on the ground rolling. Well, he took off a huge chunk of time too. Now a minute four. And that's not saying Anderson County can't go score because they can, but it, it definitely made it a little bit more difficult to get one here before the end of the, the first half. You need signs, you need banners and one day signs and banners. 865-525-5474. Van's not there. Just ask for JP. Will slip screen across the middle. And the Eagles all over that one. Yeah, nice job that time by Brady Hughes. The timeout here. Who took the timeout? Official timeout. Official for timeout, okay. Eric, what do we got on our kick for tires? 
Yeah, we got Connor down here. He's ready to roll, but not only Connor, who's our kicker, but we've got the students from Anderson County and Gibbs. So it's going to be a lot of kids that want to say, get back, get back, give us room. But that's coming up here in a minute. Martinez looks to throw, and good timing there. There he is again. Jones, Jones had a had great first nice half. Yeah. Well, me, by the way, uh, we talk about uh, Maryville and Bearden and Farragut and Bradley Central. Halftime score, Bradley 35, Udawa 0. Do you believe that's double digits? That is well into double digits. It's <laughs> Don't don't forget to call my guy Steve Kuntz at the Kuntz Cram Course. Prepare for the ACT. Something Mark did not do, which is why he doesn't know 10 is double digits. That's just barely double digits. Martinez looks to throw. Throws this one across the middle. Catch is made behind the secondary. Dragging defenders down to the 10-yard line. And Eli Braden for 60 yards with 30 seconds to go in the half. Right down the seam, what pretty pass. pitching catch. What a pass. That's not just barely a 60-yard play. A timeout. Well, the defender obviously was just trying to rip the ball Trying out. to get the football out. Trying to rip the football out. But what a great pass by Walker Martinez. It almost is... Campbell County-esque, if you will, from a week ago where receivers were just running wide open all night long. Yeah, Schoen trying to rip that ball out. Maybe would have saved him 15 yards if he had just tackled him instead of trying to, to get the turnover. Wouldn't it be better just to grab the guy and throw him to the ground rather than just keep doing this? Well, you know, I don't know, Packer. Would it? <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> I'm calling Workman's comp. <laughs> it was... I was taking the opportunity to hit you legally. But, uh, hey, so next really week, Carnes and Oak Ridge is where we'll be next week. Looking forward to seeing Deshaun Bishop next week. Yeah, I am too. Uh, it gets thicker. Uh, he's uh, just as explosive, just as fast. And, and it, you know, it, it, he loves playing in these games. What can Oak Ridge do to kind of pull themselves off up the mat? Can they find anything tomorrow night against Greenville? They've struggled offensively. For the last couple of years, can they find some mojo in the latter part of this season? First down and 10 at the 10. Martinez looking to throw, rolling left. Better get rid of the football, and he finally will. Oh, he almost batted almost that right to the A.C. receiver. By the way, well wishes to uh, Craig Price, who's normally our Red Hat official, who is not here tonight, uh, a little under the weather. Yeah, he'll be back next week. I was hoping Austin was going to jump in. I mean, it is his father. <laughs> Gary Kennedy is filling in this week. Eric Kane on your right, looking dapper as always. Jimmy Matlock looking uh, stoic. Mount Rushmore of the uh, local car folks, tire folks. That was a great shot. Of local car folks. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Second down and goal at the 10 yard line. 22 seconds to go. Martinez looks to throw. There's this one all by himself. And touchdown. That was pretty easy. To Braden Miller, 10 yards. And let's just say that the dam is broken wide open. Just standing wide open in the corner of the end zone. So how quickly the game turns from 20 to 17 to 34 17. Speaking of the hair, I wonder how the Gambooses game not makeovers working out for us. It's a good question. I wonder if we're more aerodynamic. I mean, all of them at halftime really could use a Gambooza's game night makeup. Yeah, Miller was wide open in the back of the end zone. And just like that, it's a 17-point game going to halftime.
Kings Academy up on Lakeway Christian. 25 to 7 as they play in the second quarter. Five plays, 70 yards in just 48 seconds. Here it came. Yeah, Austin, earlier you were talking about it's an important middle eight here for Gibbs. And since then, you've had Anderson County score two touchdowns. Gibbs go a three and out back up in their own 20. It's just not been a, a good middle eight as you were referencing there earlier a couple months ago. No, uh, and, and again, Anderson County gets the ball to start the second half. Yeah. So what well, went 20 to seven, it could be 40, or 20 to 17, could be 41 to 17 in a matter of about five minutes of game time. Go! Kickoffs have been deep, and this one again into the end zone. I wonder if that GoPro is going to get any worthwhile footage. I mean, it's moving around pretty severely. Ella's not exactly running smoothly. There's no way Max could do that. I mean, what's that going to get you? Can play a little Elvis Hound Dog here on the PA? My kids love Elvis. Come home one day, they all of a sudden wonder, like, damn, play, they play Hound Dog by Elvis on YouTube. Really? <laughs> But Gibbs going to take a knee, just get to halftime. The uh, the last couple of minutes have uh, not gone according to plan, for sure. But time now for one of the highlights of the night, and that is Tony Budnick running out onto the field, leading about 100 kids out there. <laughs> Come on, guys. we got to show Tony leading the way. <laughs> Well, well earlier, it. earlier he ran out onto the field to tell the officials, you know, hey, we're in break, stop. And they tried to start, and he went sprinting out there to stop them. We're going to make Tony Budnick a thing like we've made Chad Brown a thing, you know? I mean, that or we made Ann of One Day Signs of Manners a thing. Yeah. Officially time now for the Matlock kick for tires. Apparently we have two sets of students coming right. out. Okay, Eric, are you ready? Please. I'm ready. Uh, I think so. Yeah, we have we have uh, Gibbs students and Anderson County students. We got a lot going on here. But this is Connor. Connor tells me he used to kick some footballs when he was real little, but it's been a long did. time. H how's the confidence here? Uh, I'm definitely a little nervous. It's been a while since I've done this, but my friend Chris, who's the kicker, was in my first block this morning. And he was giving me some tips. So everybody's watching too. Oh yeah, I know. That's that's not helping. Mr. Matlock, we, we want to give some, some tires away. We haven't had any this year. No, we haven't, and I'm feeling pretty lucky. We had our third grandchild this week, so oh. I'm feeling pretty good about that. Well, congratulations for that. Let's see if Connor can get us a win here. All right, Connor, you're up. We had one kid. Yeah, we had it. a winner, Eric. Oh, we had one kid. Apologies to whoever. <laughs> <take the first. laughs> oh, look at him holding the oh, hand out. When he's stepping it's back. It's a setup. Yeah, this is a setup. Oh, oh! Oh, that was oh. close. Oh! That was close. It looks like he was kicking just last week, but hey, that's the Matlock kick for tires. Connor is going to get a free oil change, and we're going to do it again next week to see if somebody can get a pair of free tires. 34 uh. 17. Anderson County leads Gibbs. LMU halftime report coming up next. It was online just short of the green. Rivalry Thursday is brought to you by. Commercial Bank, Humana, E2 Sports, and OEB Law. Do you want top-of-the-line fitness equipment for home, school, or work? New or reconditioned, Dynabody in Maryville has everything you need to build that gym. Used equipment brands include Paramount, Life Fitness, Nautilus, Hammer Strength, and Precore. Reach for the power with Dynabody. Matlock Tire has a reputation for being a little bit old school. We're proud to be known for our outstanding hometown customer service. We've been doing things that way for over 60 years. But Matlock now offers new modern conveniences, such as family-friendly waiting areas, online appointment scheduling. You can even shop for tires and see our current stock right from your computer or smartphone. We invite you to stop into one of our five convenient locations or come see us online at matlocktireservice.com. Modern convenience, hometown service. Matlock Tire Service and Auto Repair. Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Costa. 
Dr. Malone and I here at Nostril Smiles are here to help you with any of your dental needs, whether it's a routine cleaning, a root canal, or if you just want some advice. Did you know that you don't have to settle for a denture anymore? My team and Dr. Malone are here to help you no matter where you're at and to help you figure out the truth for your dental health. So give us a call or visit our website at KnoxvilleSmiles.com. Hi, I'm Annie Jones. I'm the owner of Top Flight Athletics in Kingston. Hi, I'm Rob Black, Athletic Director at Fulton High School. When it comes to apparel and uniforms for our girls, um, quality and efficiency are most important. So I've got a lot of cheer moms to deal with. When we think of apparel and equipment vendors, you know, we're thinking about people who we can trust and people that we have a relationship with and uh, some, someone that will make sure we get what we want, when we want it, and it'll look the way that we uh, designed it. That and the fact that they are locally owned is the reason that we do business with E2 Sports. E2 Sports has been that for us, and that's who we're, we're in partnership with right now and couldn't be more proud to do so. Reach for the power with Dynabody. New Dynabody workout equipment is made right here in Tennessee and shipped across the country. Right now, get heavy savings during our fall clearance. Go online to Dynabody.com or call to get started today. Hello, I'm Scotty Dykes, and I've been a staple major for 21 years here in Hammond, Tennessee. While our office is in Harriman, we've serviced all of East Tennessee for all the 21 years of my career. Uh, the reason why I love high school football is I've been a high school coach for 21 years here in the community in several different high schools. I feel high school football is very important to all our kids and community that it serves. The insurance industry has changed a lot since I've started. While we used to just offer auto and home and life insurance, we now offer services such as home mortgages, uh, retirement planning, and in many other services that you wouldn't think of has been involved with insurance. So give our office a call so we can probably help you with one of the services that you may need. Welcome to the Rivalry Thursday Halftime Report, brought to you by Lincoln Memorial University. Hey, welcome back. Time now for the LMU Halftime Report. The Gibbs Eagle marching band out on the field, playing as we speak. It's the Rivalry Thursday Sounds of the Band, sponsored by Gray Hodges Corporation, supplier of craft-made cabinetry. All band directors, all band members, if you can hear me in East Tennessee, you are invited to be a part of the Commercial Bank Rivalry Showcase Band. We are trying to get about 500 kids in the band this year. Saturday night, December the 10th, right here with full fireworks, laser show. By the way, there's the email. Contact Ron Rogers, rrrogers886 at gmail.com. I just put the email on our Twitter at Rivalry Thursday, and we'll put it on all our social media networks right now. Now the band spotlight is brought to you by Exterior Home Solutions, and tonight the spotlight shines on the drum major here for Anderson County, actually. As they went first tonight, J.C. Cooper and Bella Crow.
Uh, time now for Tyler Baker, who is the Anderson County FCA director. Tyler, how are you, sir? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm good. Let's talk about what you've got going on here at uh, Anderson County with Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Man, it's crazy. Right now, we, uh, we're we gathering each Wednesday in, in the school during the school hour. And, man, we have 90, 95 students showing up just to come hang out and talk about Jesus. Man, it, it's it's really unique what's happening right now in the community. I don't know if you can see uh, a monitor or pictures, but uh, – it appears you're in the uh, the library, obviously, here. Yep. Yeah, we, we meet every Wednesday during the first 20 minutes of lunch. Uh, in the library, we have students that share their hearts every week just to what God's doing in their life. Uh, they let me host a game for some reason. I don't know why, but, you know, we go in and have fun, crank it up. We're not as quiet in the library as we should be, but, you know, it's what? a good time. So, yeah, man, yeah. <laughs> I've got I gotten in some trouble a little bit. So. <laughs> I'm sure you've been forgiven. Yeah, I have. But man, it's cool. And you know, we got Fields of Faith coming up in, sure. in a few weeks, so it, it's it's awesome. Awesome. Hey, man, Tyler, good to see you, man. Thanks you too, for man. stopping by. Thank you. Uh, with that said, we'll go down for our dizzy bat race, uh, which is brought to you by Fellowship of Christian Athletes and a prize pack up for grabs down there, Eric Kane. Yeah, it's loud down here. They're ready to roll. The winner's going to get this FCA prize pack. We got Jorge, he said that's his name. I don't care to find out what his real name is. And then we got Jacob over here. Jorge did it a couple weeks ago, so he's saying he's gonna get a, a, a repeat championship here. So, all right, five times around, and the first one that grabs the pylon wins. You guys ready? Ready, set, go. <laughs> they both overshot it, it's whoever gets it. And I think it is Gibbs that we have a little wrestle match down here. We'll give it to, we'll give it to Gibbs. Hopefully no punches are thrown. <laughs> FCA Dizzy Bat Challenge. Always a whole lot of fun here. It is 34-17. And we'll continue on with LMU Halftime Reports. Anderson County leading Gibbs. Yeah. the Rivalry Thursday Halftime Report, brought to you by Lincoln Memorial University. Well, before we get to the Gibbs band down there, let's head back down to the sideline and see exactly what's happening with the Gambuza's what game night makeover. What a change. Look at this guy. Give him, give him a good turn. Jeez. Push side of the head there. Looking that nice? Look at Carter. Yeah, Carter's looking good, man. Uh, I, I mean, I, we're biased over the work, but, like, no joke, there was, like, 40, like, Anderson County girls in pink down here just like 
gushing over him. Like I, I was like, well, if that that speaks for itself. So. Wait, we can actually see dimples on Carter now. Yeah, there's dimples there. Yeah, absolutely. There one. You know, but you sound like my guy Todd over at Gambooses. <laughs> Every time I'm done with a haircut, he goes, man, I think it's a great haircut. And I said, are you ever going to cut my hair and say I really screwed it up this time? <laughs> oh, no, no, he would never. He, he never will. Never, never do it. Hey, yeah. hey, Eric, thanks so much. Tell Madison, great job, Carter. He it's looks great. Great job. Carter, you look great. Sounds good. All right, let's head out there to the uh, the Gibbs Marching Band, uh, the Gray Hodges Sounds of the Band. Rock Band. Great job there by the uh, Gibbs Marching Band. So as we have said, the uh, Commercial Bank Rivalry Showcase, uh, which is presented by Food City, is going to be right back here at Anderson County, Saturday night, December the 10th, an all-star game, all-star band, 17 schools of Knoxville against 38 outlying county schools. Two of our better players that are expected to play in the game are standing by with Eric Kane. And we got Zach Lonsford and Lance Williams of Alcoa, obviously, and guys, the the invites went out for the robbery showcase this week, and you got yours. Obviously, you, you did accept, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When you saw that last year, some of your teammates playing in this, was it something you said, okay, next year I want to play in this game? Yeah, it looked fun. We went to we all went to the game as a team, kind of, and uh, we watched it, and it looked like they had a lot of fun out there, and we started playing it. Zach, obviously, it's a chance to compete against, uh, you know, a lot of guys in the area, a lot of teams and players that you don't get to compete against. It seems like a really cool experience to go out there and just see what you can do. Yes, sir. I'm just excited to play with the best of the best. And obviously this game will come after, you know, a potential deep playoff run. It would feel like it's the icing on the top of a, a high school career, right? Yes, sir. I'm just excited to go out there and have one more uh, game with my teammates. And uh, guys, so you said you went and watched it last year. Do you remember of any of uh, your teammates, any of the big time plays or anything that was neat? I know there were fireworks. There was a whole lot of stuff that happened there last year at Oak Ridge. Uh, I, just the people that played, Caden Buckles, Max Hodge, um, Bubba, Jeff, I mean, Williams, um, which I think a couple more played, uh, and I just enjoyed watching them. It was pretty cool. Well, we're going to enjoy watching both of you guys play this year. Until then, with the, with the games and the playoffs, and then obviously in the rivalry showcase, but part two guys will be competing on December the 10th at the rivalry showcase, second annual. I can't wait for that. Yeah, it's always fun to see, you know, players like Alcoa, uh, uh, being blocked, you know, for, for Maryville guys and, and Bearden guys playing with Farragut guys and guys that have been rivals all year long get to play together, get to play against each other, and uh, a lot of fun on Saturday, December the 10th. By the way, once again, I put on social media, if you're a band director or a band member, go on our social media. There's the email there, contact Ron Rogers. You'll get to practice that week at the University of Tennessee in their band hall. And uh, we expect to have about 500 kits in that band. Going to be kind of cool. Fireworks, laser show, all that stuff going on. So it's going to be a lot of fun on Saturday, December the 10th. Uh, Diamond Clear Media has got a bunch of games coming your way tomorrow night. And the voice of the Central Bobcats is with us tonight.
Yes, sir, Mark. We'll first take you over to Austin East and the Roadrunners. It's a lot more fun practicing over there Mimi. in AE. Mimi, right on cue, Mark. They started 0-3, but Austin East, they've won three of their last four, starting to trend in the right direction. They've had a really difficult schedule there in Class 3A, but they'll have their hands full this Friday night against a South Pittsburgh team that scores 38 points per game. South Pittsburgh, a winner. 41-0 at home last week in a 1A state title game. Campbell County is at Pell, is at Pell, I should say. Sign me up for Landon Hensley versus Jordan Potts. Huge matchup in Class 5A Region 3. A region title, maybe a home playoff game on the line. And also, South Dole is at Central. After starting 1-3, Central has rolled off three straight games. It'll be a fun one between the Keys and the Bobcats. Tomorrow night, Mark. Yeah, key game uh, tomorrow night. Key week tomorrow night. Uh, anxious to see how Austin East does against South Pitt. Zach, thank you. Let's take a break right here. We'll come back with the second half on FCA's Rivalry Thursday, presented by Pilot Company, 3417 Anderson County at the half. Thanks for watching the Rivalry Thursday Halftime Report, brought to you by Lincoln Memorial University. Rivalry Thursday is brought to you by Fellowship of Christian Athletes, Iris Networks, Knoxville Orthopedic Clinics, and Exterior Home Solutions. 125 years ago, LMU was born out of the desire to provide opportunity to the underserved, a living memorial to a great president who believed knowledge was a transformative force. Over the decades, we've prepared students for careers in medicine, education, nursing, business, and law so they can go serve their communities. While a lot has changed over the past 125 years, our mission has not. Values, education, service. This is Lincoln Memorial University. Football is back. And OMB Law is excited for a season full of big hits and those nail-biting near misses. If you've been injured, OEB Law will come to your defense. Call OEB Law and turn your wreck into a check. Safety, integrity, reliability. More people trust the Joe Newbert family to return their vehicle back to its original condition or better. Only Joe Newbert Collision Centers offer pickup and delivery, worry-free insurance claim handling, and guaranteed repairs for as long as you own your vehicle. Insist on locally owned Joe Newbert Collision Centers. And drive safely out there. Being a State Farm agent for over 30 years, I've walked alongside my customers through all their life stages. Saving you money on your insurance is something I take pride in, but earning your trust is something I value just as much. You can count on me to be there through all life's joyous moments. Real comfort, real food, real good. For almost 30 years, that's been Aubrey's commitment to you. But when everything changed overnight, you taught us what real good really looks like. You've called in takeout and delivery orders, and sometimes you just called to say hello. Thank you. Thank you for ordering, tipping so generously, and helping us keep people working, because that's what real good really looks like, and we'll never forget it. Apparel for Playoff Friday is furnished by E2 Sports and Adidas. E2 Sports, online at myE2Sports.com. Third quarter is brought to you by Pilot Company, proud supporter of the philanthropic effort that is live high school football here in East Tennessee. All the way back to the very beginning, Austin Price. Things started off well for the Gibbs Eagles on their first drive. Yeah, Bryson Palmer, 60 yards caught and tackled right here at the end from behind by 16, Andrew Meyer. That led to a field goal and a three nothing lead. Possession later, Walker Martinez finding a wide open receiver down the sideline, Eli Braden, and that led to this. Moogan down the field to steal a line from Austin. You're rubbing off on me after a while. Touchdown here makes it 13 to three to Bryson Vowell, and back come the Eagles. Yep, that's right, as uh, they find Schoen, that being Cayman Schoen as he goes 60 yards to pay dirt, and that gets gives their first touchdown. Back comes Moog, just rolling and bowling over defenders into the end zone. And another pretty pitch and catch. Wait, no, it wasn't. It was picked off by number six, Bryson Walker, which leads to another. Shown, 50-yard touchdown. 
added up as 110 yards on two plays. Man, you're all wound up after a week at Disney. That made it 20 to 17. Gibbs just trying to get to halftime. Not gonna happen though. Another touchdown catch by Eli Brayton. And then Walker Martinez finding Brayton Miller back corner of the end zone. And that's where we are. 34-17 is the halftime score. 376. Wow. Uh, my addition and addition puts us at 600 total yards in the first half. How about that? Back I did in, do good in the Back ACT. and forth they go. But the difference is doubling up. Not quite doubled up in total yards, but it's doubled up on the scoreboard. It is. Eric Kane, uh, I believe they said, is going to be down on the field somewhere. Eric? Eric Kane apparently is not ready, so we went a little early. Thought he was going to grab somebody down there, but we'll work on that. 34-17 is the halftime score, and for Brad Turner, got to get a stop here to start the second half as the Mavericks will get the football. They won the toss to start the game in deferred. Martinez with a pretty good night so far at quarterback for the Mavericks. 13 of 19, 234 yards for Davy Young. Three touchdowns and an interception. Braden, five catches, 140 and a couple of touchdowns. You know, I hate going to, we, we go eat at El Chico sometimes with Davey and some friends. And, check, check. You know, everybody get like enchiladas or something. Go, um, I'll just take the fajitas, just the chicken only, no tortillas. <laughs> like, so that's what we have to do to look like him? The Gillum? Yeah, the Gillum. Yeah. I didn't know you were going to lunch here. A couple times. That was an enlightening conversation that just happened. Uh, Moog, nine carries, 63 yards. Really, really wasn't sure where you were touchdown. going there. Obviously. Um, no, 12 carries, 77 yards. Loving I mean, on his physique. You know. You onside kicking here. I don't know. I mean, if you go, I, I think you got to alter what you do on defense. Letting them gash on the ground didn't exactly work in the first half. So. Kick it deep, returnable from the eight yard line, coming to the near side. Again, there he is again. He's been dynamite, the young freshman on special teams, Dewan Harris. Good numbers for Walker Martinez. Sure was 13 and 19. He completes this next one. Completes 70% of his balls. To earn 30 plus yards. Football back at the 16 yard line. Such a juvenile backer. 13 of 19. End of inside to no. Now past the 20 to the 23. You know, you would think the guy that's doing the PA would have a little bit more emphasis on, he, you know. He, he, can't, he, he, no. can't, he can't. He He has to be impartial towards his child. Oh, what? I thought his child, he mispronounced his last name. He called him Noe in the first half. No, but if you want a great chiropractor, give Dr. Richie Noah a call in downtown Clinton. <laughs> he has worked wonders. On me. Checks in the mail. As no, just like a bull in a china shop, past the 30 to the 33 in a first down. See Murphy Fair, the guru, up here in the press box. He there was just he honored. He was just honored down there on the field at halftime. He's making his way over here to tell us about the origin of Mr. Anderson back in the 1800s who started <laughs> Anderson County. And that is coming up here in just a few minutes. Packer, how many counties are there in, in Tennessee? That's the question. Almost intercepted. Can now, we have 13 in our television DMA. Yeah, how many are in Tennessee, though? Uh, do you know, or are you just trying to throw me under the bus? 95. 
It's is that, is that true? Hey, Murphy? Packer, if we're, to put it in your terms, it's five short of triple digits. <laughs> <laughs> We're putting Murphy on the headset, by the way. Murph, how many counties are there in Tennessee? 95. Uh, what's the state bird, Packer? Let's do this. No. The Mockingbird. Come I was on, about Packer. to say Mockingbird. No, you were Martinez looking to throw, rolls left, and will step out What's of the state animal, okay, Packer? Can, okay, state, state animal. State animal, Austin Price. Uh, here, let's flip around A Raccoon. Here. And show Murphy oh. fair. Flip around. The camera's behind you, Murph. Well, I know you're headed into retirement, <laughs> but okay. Here's Austin. Stand up, please. Oh, you want me to be on? Well, yeah. If you're going to harass, there we like you're go. Harass. Oh, here we go. Okay, 10:30 to go. Walker Martinez has time. Rares up, throws a deep oh, receiver God. all by himself, looking for the end zone and finds it. Touchdown, Mavericks. Fireworks going off 63 yards to Eli Brady. They make that look like the music. You know, that's what, they, that's what they do around here at Anderson County. We'll wait till after the replays and all of that before. And all day to throw. Just drops it in the bread basket. By the way, Murph, that puts him over 300 yards on the night. Not bad. Not bad at all. And 70, and 70 percent completion percentage. Mm. Mm. Did you add that up? No, it was 13 of 19. Was that the first play of the second half? 14 of 20. That's pretty impressive, by the way. First throw of the second that. half. 41 17, Anderson County. So let's welcome in Murphy Fair, the uh, guru of, uh, uh, of not just high school football, but high school sports for so long, and you decided you're retiring. Yeah, I've got grandkids, uh, one in high school, freshman at Adamsville. Okay. Pretty good football player, and his younger sister, pretty good volleyball player and softball player in junior high. So I'm okay. going to watch my kids for a while. Are you going to start a publication about the, the, the fair grandkids? or no, what are you doing? no, no, no. I'm just going to be grandpa. Okay. I'm, I'm glad Anderson County is doing real good. I really, was really proud about when Gary contacted me, Gary Terry. Yeah. Uh, but I thought, I don't know what happens if they lose. They won't really let me come back. Yeah, well, <laughs> but I, no, think I think they got it well. I think, I think, I think they're right safe. Now, yeah. yeah. Think about it, this was 20 to 17 with four minutes to go in the half, and basically it was five like, minutes of game time later, it's 41 17. Yeah. How long did you cover high school football in East Tennessee? Or just Tennessee? Tennessee in general? Uh, oh, gee, probably the late 60s when I first moved back here. I was working for the Union City Daily Messenger while I was going to school at UT Martin. Okay. And covering preps at that time. And uh, off and on, there's been a few little gaps here and there, but that would be 53 years. Did you just see kind of an opportunity that nobody was covering high school sports? Yes. Or was that was a lot of it. There had been a couple of attempts in, in other parts of the state before I did in 1988, but I think the timing maybe wasn't quite right uh, as it was when I did. And uh, I think the Titans coming to town actually helped me a lot because mm. it took a lot of – High school sports out of the Tennessean. Okay. They were covering the Titans instead yeah. of high school preps like they used to. And uh, I've just been very blessed, Mark. Yeah, yeah. And and it's happened everywhere. I mean, I think around here there's, you know, so we're very lucky here. Uh, Jesse Smith, he does a great job with five-star preps and, do, does. and does great coverage there. We've got high school football here that we've done for years. and. Uh, but, but Tennessee, University of Tennessee steals a lot of those headlines. They do, and, and our state has been blessed with a lot of athletes from other states. I think COVID was responsible for a lot of that, a lot of those. I've got a friend who's the athletic director for all the schools in Williamson County, Brentwood, Franklin, those okay, areas. Sure. And he said the year after COVID hit, there was not a day passed that he didn't get at least one phone call from a parent in California wanting to know about their athletic oh, programs. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. those scouts are, are stopping in Tennessee instead of driving through it and flying over it. I, I would venture to say you've watched a game at every stadium in the state in 53 years. Uh, take away your home. Because I, I think everybody, it's like sure. if you live in Orlando, you don't, you take for granted Disney World, you live in Pigeon Forge, you take for granted sure. Dollywood. Take away from where you live. Favorite place to watch a game? Oh, wow! Good question. I would probably have to say Hartsville, Trousdale County. It's close to where I lived, and uh, if I had sold as many magazines everywhere as I did per capita in Hartsville, <laughs> okay, uh, I'd be flying in to all these games. <laughs> yeah, wow. The Piggly Wiggly store in Hartsville sold nearly a hundred copies of my magazine every year for uh, 
30 years. So so I will say this as Ella runs back out there I again. Love that. You, no. <laughs> you, you've done the, the sideline uh, for the football championships. Are you retiring from that too? I don't think so. I've still got a couple of radio shows that I'm doing. One's kind of like, it's called Murphy's Matchups. It's kind of like uh, the old uh, Leonard's Losers. I pick the winner of every game statewide. In the last three years, I've been 80%. So I'll, I'll take those numbers, and I've got about 30 stations that carry that. So you'll still join us for the state championships on TV? So. I okay, hope good. so. I've talked to Matt a couple of times, and uh, he good. said, oh, yeah, we've got to have you with us if you're game. And I'm certainly game. Good. I started to bring my Stetson tonight, but I thought I'd wait until December. Eh, yeah, probably a good, <laughs> probably a good move. Hey, Murph, good to see you, man. You too, Mark. We appreciate Thanks you stopping you by. Do. Yeah, no, and uh, uh, Gary Terry having you out here, and uh, he was awfully excited to have you here. And uh, I said, send him up. I appreciate send it. Send him up. Good to see you, man. Take care. Watch us live up here. Third and ten here for Gibbs as they try to find any kind of rhythm, momentum. Three receivers near side, one to the top of your screen for Bryson Palmer. Palmer rolls right, gets blocked, chased from behind, and will throw this one over the outstretched hands of his wide receiver. And Gibbs will send the punting unit out. Third three and out for Gibbs. Dalen Cole is deep. Return this one off the foot of Bryson Walker. Punt is away. That makes the grab at the 33-yard line. We'll venture to the near side and look out here. And a flag comes in. So we'll check the flag. Personal foul, illegal blindside block, receiving team, 15 yard penalty, first down. Let's get a quick message from KOC. Hi, I'm Jay Crawford with Knoxville Orthopedic Clinic, and I think my message would be get to Monday or get to our Saturday sports clinic. Injuries happen all the time, not just on the athletic field, they also happen in all walks of life. And you don't necessarily need to run Im immediately to an emergency room every time you have a bump or a bruise. Get home, get it splinted with something you could have gotten at Walgreens and save yourself about a $500 copay. Come see us, the experts, either at the Saturday Sports Medicine Clinic or Monday through Friday in our offices. You'll get the expert care you need and it'll be much more efficient from a financial standpoint. Uh, just get to Monday, that's my bottom line. A big run there for Gavin. No, uh, unfortunately for the Mavericks, after a 28-yard gain, I believe this one's going to be wiped off for the penalty. Mark this one off back uh, to about the 10-yard line. Murphy Fair has been covering high school football for 50 years, deciding to retire, and uh, glad to have him up here. The golden tones of Murphy Fair. Great boy, great boys. Yep. First down in 21, mark off the 28-yard run. And Martinez handoff right up the middle. By the way, a uh, interesting score from Middle Tennessee, CPA up on Oakland, 21-0. Wow. A strange year. McMinn County final on Sweetwater, 43 to nothing. And Bradley beats Ottawa, 45 nothing. Those courtesy of the Sean Gang Sports Network. Pass. 
Moog kind of got led right into that one. That's a nice play by one Levi Allison. Yeah, almost a Joe Nibber collision of the game right here. Martinez tonight having a, uh, a heck of a night and going to be a handful for anybody. Justin Presley, the head coach at Carter, said to me the other day, says, I don't, from what we saw, I don't know that Greenville can beat that Anderson County team. Uh, it would be a great matchup. We'll see what happens. A lot of football to be played between now and then. Martinez has some time, rolls out, and will throw this one away. Fourth down and a punting situation here for the Mavericks. Well, you can take a look at uh, uh, where we are in uh, 5A. Obviously, we talk about 4A so much, but uh, in 5A, the state poll, West number one in the state, Page number two, followed by Munford, Nolansville, Daniel Boone. Boy, their defense, incredible. And in 4A, Greenville number one, Anderson County is number two in the blink of an eye. How about this bounce right here? And we'll take a break. 41-17, Anderson County in the third. Rivalry Thursday is brought to you by Pilot Company, Ted Russell Ford, Food City, and Lincoln Memorial University. Do you want top-of-the-line fitness equipment for home, school, or work? New or reconditioned, Dynabody in Maryville has everything you need to build that gym. Used equipment brands include Paramount, Life Fitness, Nautilus, Hammer Strength, and Precore. Reach for the power with Dynabody. Blue 2020 F-150 41990. Hut! Jake drops back. He's got a deal wide open. The crowd goes wild with savings. Whether you're looking for a low mileage pre-owned truck to tailgate in or a minivan to get the whole family to the game, the pre-owned patrol has what you're looking for. Only at Ted Russell Ford on Kingston Pike or Parkside Drive. Hey, this is UT head football coach, Josh Heifel. It's football time in Tennessee. When the big orange play, you don't have to miss a second of the action. Before, during, and after the game. Just make sure your radios are tuned in to 107.7 WIVK. Or if you're on the go, download the WIVK app and listen anyway. Your flagship station for the Tennessee Volunteers. 107.7 WIVK. It's a Tennessee tradition. Hi, I'm Anderson County Head Football Coach Davey Gill, and I want to tell you about my friends at Exterior Home Solutions, East Tennessee's first choice in roofing. They've been servicing East Tennessee for over 20 years, achieving a 4.9 rating on Google reviews and are listed as a platinum contractor by Owens Corning. Financing is available. I invite you to learn more about my friends at Exterior Home Solutions on their website, exteriorhomesolutions.com, or give them a call at 865-524-5888. Fireworks for the Rivalry Showcase are sponsored by OEB Law. By the Knoxville Smile Cam, brought to you by KnoxvilleSmiles.com. My dentist, Dr. Malone, Dr. Costa. Never take for granted the opportunity to see a smile after we had a year or so where we couldn't see any smiles at all. 7.41 to go in the third quarter. 41-17 Anderson County over Gibbs as the Eagles will take over the football from 25-yard line. collision of the night. No question about that. He'll be playing in the rivalry showcase. Eli Davis. How about that hit? Yeah, it just came right up and just, just plugged him. I mean, it, again, textbook. We've seen some textbook tackles tonight. This time just comes in and sticks him with a spear <laughs> and is jacked up coming up off the ground. Palmer looking to throw. Has had success running with the Mavericks. Uh, all over that one, and Palmer 
not happy as Nick Moog watching his buddy Andrew Meyer on the tackle. They put Packer and I up on the Jumbotron. So their application to be on the Jumbotron was denied during the break. Yeah, I wish we had that video. It was rather humorous. Cutting back inside. How about the running here? Rolling right, looking deep, and will finally throw this one. That catch is him. made at midfield. Beautiful catch and grab. Bryson Walker. Walker, but uh, give credit to Bryson Palmer. Well, and, and credit to Gibbs' offensive line. That's one of those games, one of those plays where you're bound to end up getting a, a holding call. Um, but that time, no holding call. Eyes up the field, and uh, way to continue to move by Walker. Right at midfield, Walker with the lead blocker in front, throws this one across the middle, gain of nine yards, down to the 41. Catch made by Connor Atkins. Next week, Gibbs will play a home game at Central against uh, York Institute before traveling to Clinton week 10 and then week 11 up to Carson Newman to play South Doyle. On in what, what will be a key game? Double pass here. Oh, yeah. Shown. What's he going to do? He's going to get one yard. <laughs> Tripped up for a gain of one. Again, this game, you know, Anderson County would, or Gibbs would love to have won it, but it has no bearing in whether they can get a home playoff game, whether they make the playoffs. They control their own destiny. They beat South Doyle. They're in. Eli for no good. Now here comes a flag. Check the flag, see what this is at the 36 yard line. Check the stats. Tony Lambert down there, defensive coordinator for the Mavericks. Longtime Oneida head coach. Was the head coach at Anderson County for about 24 hours a little while back. <laughs> Crack back, block. There's Tony. Tony became the head coach at Anderson County. Then decided to go back to Oneida, and that paved the way for then Scott County head coach David Gillum to become the head coach of the Mavericks. Personal foul, illegal blindside block, offense number 15, 15 yard penalty, second. Technically, Tony went to Scott County first, then to Oneida. Actually, no, he went to Oneida as the DC. Then to Scott County is the DC. Scott County is the head coach. Then Oneida is the head coach. Then to Cumberland. Good quiz on the life and times of Tony Lambert at the end of the night. Palmer throws this one out behind Hubs. His wife Faith is a, a jewel person. I need a haircut up in the Oneida. Give him a call. People over here. Got, got the beauty, he's got the beauty shot going up there. Chiropractor up here in the press box. Packer, you need a perm. Go see Faith. Do not need a perm. <laughs> Is that Elrod? Yeah. <laughs> Make some noise up on the Jumbotron. Palmer rolling right. Gonna cut back inside. Gonna try to make something out of nothing, and he slides to the Bottom corner of the McDonald's logo, and a fourth down after a gain of seven. You got to go for it, right? Been any good to punt? I'll just take a deep shot. Either they catch it, or they don't. Fourth down and seventeen. Forty-one seventeen. Rolls out, looks to throw. Avoids the pressure, huh? Touchdown or not, but they will call that. 
Uh, congratulations to Drs. Repay and Betcher, both with KOC, both recognized as Sports Medicine's Persons of the Year by the Southeastern Athletic Trainers Association in March. Background for the Southeast Athletic Trainers Association Sports Medicine Person of the Year. It's given to the person that has contributed to CETA, S-E-A-T-A, in athletic training as a profession. Both medical and non-medical persons have been recipients of the award. It is the highest award given to a person who may not be an athletic trainer and is designed to show a district's appreciation for all of those contributions. Speaking of appreciation, down the sideline, Nick Moog goes 45 yards for a touchdown. Fireworks go off, and that puts us to a uh, running clock. 47 to 17. Mark, there's literally like three legit candidates for the six-star MVP. Obviously, you could go Walker Martinez, right? You could easily go Nick Moog, and you could go Eli Brayton. I mean, all three. Could be one of those nights where we have to give it to more than one person. You know what I did last week? I deferred to Joe McNish, who keeps the stats, and I said, you tell me who had the best game. And we should have done this 13 years ago, 14 years ago. All those arguments that you and Skip McMillan have had every, you know, every week about who the MVP is, and you're pushing the button, and you're going, why are we picking this person? Let Joe do it. Every game for 14 years. Like brothers. Sad. Extra point is up. Eric Kane down on the sideline. What games are we going to be listening to on the radio tomorrow? Yeah, tons of uh, high school football coverage over the Cumulus Knoxville Airwaves on these sports animal. The 99-1 signal, of course, that's home in Knoxville Catholic. Catholic will be at Lipscomb Academy for Ugh. the KOC game of the week on AM 990. Uh, it is going to be Halls and Carnes. And then over on our sister station, New Sug 98.7, it is Jefferson County at Hardin Valley with Joel Silverberg. Those three football games over to tomorrow night on Keyless Knoxville. Okay. Who's going to win Saturday? Between Tennessee and LSU? No, A&M, Alabama. Yes, Tennessee, LSU. I like Tennessee in this one. Yeah, okay. I, I mean, it's got a quarterback playing at a Heisman level right now. Yeah, no question about that. Anderson County Drive was a long one, one play, and however long the touchdown was, 45 yards. Third rushing touchdown of the game for Nick Moog. 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 That's what you should do. No. What's the most interesting thing in high school football in East Tennessee this year? Just, I mean, of all the things that are the most interesting. Maryland. Cleveland over Maryland? It's not Cleveland over Maryland. It's just Maryland. I mean, you're used to seeing them win 42 to 7, 42 to 7, 49 to nothing, 49 to 7. You know, and people are staying with them a little bit more. To me, the Cleveland was just such a shocker because I look and see that Fair can beat 42 13, but I, I, I'm still not going to doubt Maribel. Still like them winning that region title. And our thanks to Ted Russell Ford. Andy White, $1,000 going to the home school, Anderson County High School. By the way, the new truck I've talked about, dragging the production unit, Ford F450 with the big 10-foot box on it. We pick it up Monday. F450. An F450 dually with a 10-foot box on the back of it to drag the production unit. It may not sound big to you, but Ted Russell Ford has worked so hard for me to get this truck. I cannot wait to get it Monday and have it in use next week at Blankenship. How many digits is that? <laughs> Three. Seven yard gain. Everybody in the truck, make sure you check your paycheck. It's back in trunk of the county. <laughs> Luckily, Didi's the one doing them. I have full faith in her. You no, know, she writes, she she types out what I tell her to pay people. You keep at this rate, I'll lower that number. <laughs> Couldn't do that. Get them 
binding eternal contract. <laughs> eternal, yes. I'll haunt you after I'm gone. Hey, here's a question. Here's a question. Yep. Um, how will you haunt me after you're gone? Um, but do you believe that the PAL team is a different team now that can play with West if they were to meet them later in the semifinal. If, if West at PAL yeah, they're is healthier. the semifinal. They're healthier, and, and so thus, yeah. I mean, as long as Jordan Potts is on the field, and Aiden Powell's Green. got, yeah. But I mean, he, Jordan Potts, listen, you can take Aiden Green off the field, Powell can still make plays. Aiden Green's phenomenal, but they still have other receivers. Yeah. You can't take Jordan Potts off the field and Powell be the same team. Again, they would take a hit if they lost Aiden Green. They can't they can't function without Jordan Potts, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. There's a difference. Um, can they beat West? Yeah, yeah, I, again. I mean, can they is a big Yes, they can because again, until West proves they can get there. I think there are similarities. But I mean, right now I think West is the best team in five A. It's not close. I think West has a great shot to beat Marable in two weeks. In my opinion, West is the favorite to win 5A. I think there are similarities right now as Palmer feels some pressure taken down from behind. I think there's similarities right now with Lamar Brown and West and Davey Gillum and Anderson County because Lamar and Davey have had good teams before and they've knocked on the door. They've knocked on the door. See, I would, knocked on I the would door. say, I would actually say the similarities lie. Is this the year they knock the door down? I would say this is the similar, where the similarities lie are Lamar Brown at West and Matt Lowe last year. And actually, I take that back because Matt made this championship game uh, the one year at Powell before he left to go to Kings and before he came back. Um, but still similarities, like teams that maybe should have gotten there that didn't. And, you know, again, I do think this is an excellent chance for West to get there. I, I think they're the favorite in 5A. In fact, Deb Lewis, I'm told, is already already has her seats of the blanket laid out down in Chattanooga. It's that, it's that serious. Well, Commercial Bank salutes the Stripes. And tonight, saluting the Stripes, our Greg Porter, linesman. 26 seasons officiating, works for Coca-Cola. Auto racing fan is his hobby, and uh, you, know, you take for granted these guys that are out there working hard on Thursdays and Friday nights, and without the officials, there are no high school football games. That takes us to the end of three, 48-17. Anderson County showing us why they are the number two team in the state. Rivalry Thursday is brought to you by Commercial Bank, Humana, E2 Sports, and OEB Law. Community banking is about location and much more. It's about family. We reside in your community. We are a part of your community. At Commercial Bank, our commitment extends beyond the walls of our branches. It's displayed each day in the opportunities we provide, the money we give back, and the time we commit, all to help improve the lives of the people, families, and businesses that make our communities great. Commercial Bank, life made better. Hi, I'm State Farm Agent Scotty Dykes. While the insurance industry has changed over the years, our office offers auto, home, life, mortgages, and many other banking services, including retirement planning. So please give our office a call text us or email us and we'd be happy to do business with you. Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Costa. Dr. Malone and I here at Knoxville Smiles are here to help you with any of your dental needs, whether it's a routine cleaning, a root canal, or if you just want some advice. Did you know that you don't have to settle for a denture anymore? My team and Dr. Malone are here to help you no matter where you're at and to help you figure out the truth for your dental health. So give us a call or visit our website at KnoxvilleSmiles.com. Matlock Tire has a reputation for being a little bit old school. We're proud to be known for our outstanding hometown customer service. We've been doing things that way for over 60 years. But Matlock now offers new modern conveniences, such as family-friendly waiting areas, online appointment scheduling. You can even shop for tires and see our current stock right from your computer or smartphone. We invite you to stop into one of our five convenient locations or come see us online at matlocktireservice.com. Modern convenience, hometown service. Matlock Tire Service and Auto Repair. 
Hi, my name is Steve Shelton, Managing Principal with First Choice Lending Services. Right now, the housing market in Tennessee can be challenging, and you need the right lender to help you walk through it. We're a local lender. We're part of your community, and we know how to best serve you. When you get a home loan with First Choice Lending, you'll get a loan that is customized just for you. If you need help getting approved for a home loan, please give one of our experienced loan officers a call today. And the fourth quarter is brought to you by Hillary Frost Homes. Your opportunity to have lunch with the Vols. Go to HillaryFrostHomes.com. You and three of your friends will have lunch with the Vols in December. We'll announce the winner on the Locker Room Show on Sunday night, December the 4th. Spire Sports helping us with that. HillaryFrostHomes.com. First down and 10 at the 31-yard line. No up the middle. All right, stats are getting a little out of hand now. Brought to you by OEB Wall. 464 is the jazzy music plays in the background, and Austin starts gyrating. Anything stand out? Walker right Martinez. Another one. And as soon and I'm changing my vote for the player of the game. Catch is made by Bryson Bowell. We're gonna have a quarterback with over 400 yards, and somebody's gonna say somebody else should be player of the game. I don't know. I'm, I'm taking my vote back. I didn't know we voted. We voted in the commercial I'll break. I'll let Joe decide. You said Joe decides. I'll let Joe decide. He said who he said. Martinez looks one way, throws the other. Now tackled. of the year for Bryson Val one-handed stab and I don't know if anybody can get this to him but somebody just got lost okay pretty nice right there for Bryson Val this next 10 20 is going to roll off really quick Still keep running. Not accurate. Is back. What well, was it? 20 to 17 game is now 17. 55 to 17.
whether the balls are on the road or at home, whether it's a high school game on Friday night, keep Food City Pepsi and Frito-Lay in mind as your tailgating headquarters. Place that order online at least 24 hours in advance at foodcity.com, and they will have that order ready for you. You're going to have to do it early on Saturday, by the way. Balls in LSU start at noon. That's Beignets on the bayou for breakfast. 11 Central Time. Kick is a deep one into the end zone. Our E2 Sports Scholar Athlete of the Game for Anderson County is Tate Russell. A 4.2 GPA for the wide receiver. And my thanks to E2 Sports for handling all of our apparel this year uh, for Rivalry Thursday. Back to Adidas, thank goodness. They handle all of our embroidery and all of our caps for Joe McNish. Don't have to wait six weeks to get embroidery done. They'll have it done literally the next day. Got all of our playoff stuff today, handed it out to the crew. Everybody was very happy. I'm going to go with the quarterback change to the young freshman, that being nine, Chase Norman. Five play, 75 yard drive for Anderson County. They're now over 500 yards of offense at 537 as the clock will run. Young left hander. Always a fun time of year to feel the, uh, the chill in the air as it's cooler at night. You get tired of summer. Maybe we had a hot summer, you know? Yeah, well, I mean, I know you guys had a decent weather last week and, and another nice night tonight. Uh, you know, it is nice to kind of get some cool nights, get a little bit of a breeze going on in here. It's normal to keep it. Get close to a first down. I will break in right here and give the update of our Reeves Across America giving tonight as they have they brought me the the bag of cash here as uh, Austin's on his phone over here. He doesn't want you to see it, so he's going to back out of the way. Uh, $1,332. Thank you to everybody in East Tennessee. Uh, that is a lot of wreaths that will go on the wreath uh, stones of our veterans. And, uh, and we're, we're over $10,000 or so this year on, on giving. And uh, very generous. By the way, you can go online, knoxreads.org. You'll see the Rivalry Thursday logo there. Uh, there it is. You'll see the Rivalry Thursday logo and click on there and give and be a part of our fundraising effort. Total. Next week we'll be at Oak Ridge. So Carnes and Oak Ridge, you're up next. Carnes came through big last year. Carnes came up big. $2,600 or so that they came up with. About a third down and three now for Gibbs. By the way, updated score. Um, CPA up on Oakland, 21 to seven. Third down and three at the 49 yard line. Off inside for the first down for the Eagles. Needed three, got four yards. A game next week over at Oak Ridge between Carnes and Oak Ridge will be a very important one in that region. Yeah, 100%. Could be for a home playoff game. Pretty much is, yeah. After Powell has uh, taken care of their business. Yeah. Oh, nice play oh, by Norman. Nice play here. Down inside the 25-yard line to about the 24. I will say, uh, since we're here in Anderson County, I do want to give a big shout-out to my wife, who uh, the last couple of years through the COVID pandemic as, as the director of nurses for Anderson County Schools, uh, I've sat around and watched it all happen. As she's handled these vaccine clinics and masking and social distancing and contact tracing and everything, and her and her nurses have uh, 
Man, they, you know, that's that's the Lord's work right there. Yeah. I mean, like, I mean, you talk about a lot of work. And, uh, you know, I mean, it, not totally out of the woods, but at the same time, you know, a lot of that stuff is, you know, well, she's hopefully been, a thing of the past. In her position, she, she's been under the gun for a while. Well, yeah, I mean, it's been, I mean, <laughs> nobody asked for that. No, none of these nurses in any of these counties asked for, you know, the stuff they've had to, to you know, kind of have on, put on their plate the last couple of years. That's from one heavy note. Here's a light. So we're going down the road here. And Avery goes, hey, I got a question. I said, what's that, Avery? How old's Avery? She's seven. Okay. She goes, if you could only have one thing for the rest of your life, which would you choose? I said, what are we choosing? She says, French fries. Donuts or milkshakes? So I put that to you, Packer. If you could, if you, if you had to choose one that you had every day for the rest of your life, would you rather donuts every day or milkshakes? No, all seriousness, did you stick to that, or did you say, could I add a third thing and make it French fries? I did not. You did not. Okay. No. Okay. Uh, I would say milkshakes. You I would, would say mayonnaise. Got gotcha. you. No, Ranch dressing. No, gotcha. I would. No, I would live on chocolate milkshakes the rest of my life. My wife would live on donuts. Down and 10 at the 13 yard line off right tackle, looking for the end zone and sliding Levi in Allison. for the score is Allison, who is a sophomore. 5'9, 165. That will stop the clock at 417 to go. Nice move inside. A lot of the backups are in now. And for those of you who are adding up the numbers, even with the touchdown, the clock will still be a nonstop clock. Let's take a break and hear a message from our friends at Exterior Home Solutions. Renita Stennett is here with Exterior Home Solutions. Uh, first off, you're kind of new to Exterior Home Solutions. Very new. I've been there for a couple of weeks now. I have worked for them in the past doing some marketing. Why did you go back? Because they are some of the most giving people that I've ever worked with, and they just care about their team. They care about giving back to the community, and I'm just all about that. Bernita, one of the things about Exterior Home Solutions is the trust that you have. I mean, they're, they're a, your guys are a platinum yeah. producer for, for roofing and all kinds of home solutions. Right. Yes, we are. Um, we do lots of roofing, siding, windows, decking, fencing, anything exterior that you can think of, we do it. And you do the financing too. We do the financing too. And most people get nervous about financing, but it's a real simple process. It takes about five minutes. It's affordable, low monthly payments, and we can do it all over the phone. We need to appreciate you coming out. Thank you so much. Yeah, and Exterior Home Solutions has turned into really a great partner, no matter what it is, roofing, uh, home solutions, uh, you name it, at Exterior Home Solutions. Great people, they, they love high school football. Jeff Hedrick, uh, who owns Exterior Home Solutions, longtime great friend of, uh, of our former friend Joel Helton over at Central. 11 plays, 80 yards, 603. It's funny how a drive can take up a lot of time and the clock's not stopping. Turn from the five yard line. And watch out. Taken down at the 45 yard line. By the locker room, connected by Iris Networks. Sunday nights, 10.35 in Knoxville. 10.30 in Nashville on Fox. 11 o'clock Sunday nights on Fox in Tri-Cities. You'll be back from uh, Baton Rouge. Lord help. Show the Jumbotron, guys. Can we show the Jumbotron? Yeah, I don't know if they'll leave that up there. We can show the Jumbotron. I really wish we could. Uh, that's hard. There's the Jumbotron. Chad Brown bent down. Oh, that's great. That's quality stuff right there. His CB45 has never looked so good. What do you think Chad would choose? Would, choose? would he choose milkshakes or donuts? <laughs> he knows he's on the screen. <laughs> he's like Devin Hester in the Super Bowl on the kickoff guess, return. Look how he pulls his hoodie back so everybody can see him clear. Hey, Chad, give that official a wet willy right there. <laughs> no? 
<laughs> they announced he's single over the PA. That's great. <laughs> oh, just what we don't need. Oh, my gosh. We digress. Uh, That's what happens when it's 55-24. Yeah. And we never wanted the clock to run faster in our lives. Look out here. Going down the left side. Cutting back. Still running. Waylon LaRue, a sophomore. LaRue with a 37-yard run as the clock approaches two minutes to go. We were lucky the last two weeks. Weston Alcoa, Clinton Campbell County, and then Anderson County. I don't think next week, Carnes Oak Ridge, I think that's going to be a knockdown drag out. Yeah, I, I agree. Can, can can Oak Ridge score enough? And can and honestly, can Carnes defense do enough? You know, I, they've really struggled at points to s slow people down this year. And of course, Oak Ridge has struggled to get going offensively. So it's kind of yeah. The immovable object versus the immovable object. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, if you like to see the shots of the night, like, uh, well, there you go. D-H-I-L dot, there's the shot. That's the shot of the night right there. Get all of these shots from all of our games this season, whether it's the football, whether it's the band, the cheerleaders, at D-H-I-L dot photos. And uh, our young guy, Dustin, does such a great job. His dream is to shoot a game at Neyland Stadium. We're working on an opportunity to make that happen for that young man. He deserves the opportunity for sure. Very likely the last play in the game. And that should do it. So the final score tonight, Anderson County. Stays undefeated, moves to 8 0 on the season with a 55 24 win. Moves to 8 0. Oh, here Has a big win in the bull ring. 55 24.